Well, good afternoon and welcome to Fort Allen Park as we celebrate the installation of a remarkable set of interpretive exhibits and with it the formal completion of Friends of the Eastern Promenade's Eastern Promenade Fort Allen uh, Eastern Promenade's Fort Allen Rehabilitation Project. Uh, I'm Matthew Kennedy, the president of the board of the Friends of the Eastern Promenade. We're honored to welcome Mayor Ethan Stribling to Fort Allen, uh, City Council Member Belinda Ray, and to welcome so many others whose vision, effort, and dedication have made this day possible. Our valued private sector partners, individual donors, artists, architects, historians, builders, extraordinary city staff, our neighbors, and our colleagues at the Friends of the Eastern Promenade. The Fort Allen Rehabilitation Project has been a remarkable collaborative effort. Its success rests on countless individual contributions of all sorts. And as with most collaborative efforts of any complexity, at least the successful ones, the drive and resolve of one person stands out. One person who pulled all of the disparate parts together and shepherded them forward, who found solutions when none seemed available, and who kept pushing and pushing and pushing to make this project the very best it possibly could be. Every contribution to this project accrues to its overall success, but it's a simple fact that absent Diane Davidson's vision and energy and determination, we would not be assembled here today to celebrate its completion. So let me be the first to say, Diane, thank you for everything you've done, and to call to the podium Diane Davidson, the founder and executive director of Friends of the Eastern Promenade. Thank you, President Kennedy. <laughs> um, Diane Davison, I'm the Executive Director for Friends of the Eastern Prom. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Whew, this marks um, a huge accomplishment for the City of Portland, for Friends of the Eastern Prom. A uh, project, the Fort Allen Rehabilitation Project, began in April of 2011. And what you see before you here today are the interpretive panels that are the icing on the cake of this historic landscape. So grateful to have the support. Each and every one of you that are here, and even those that can't be here, have had an impact. And despite Matthew's kind words, no one operates in a vacuum. The city has been amazingly responsive. The community has been amazingly responsive. Um, at many times, it was a labor of love. Um, I'm fortunate to live 120 steps away from the project. Um, sometimes 100, depending on how fast I was moving. Um, but in all seriousness, today is really the icing on the cake. We're so grateful. I want to make sure that I don't forget any of our uh, founders, or excuse me, our supporters and donors who really made this possible through our capital campaign program. Um, we have Bullis Family, Crandall Toothaker, Edmund Gardner. We have an anonymous donor. Uh, we also have the Davis Family Foundation who supported three different phases of this project. Um, Martins Point Health Center and anonymous friends that helped make this possible. In this last segment with the interpretive panels of which there are 12, I think you're going to love them once you have the chance to visit. Um, we're most grateful to Norway Savings Bank who is with us here today, to another anonymous friend who supported these works of art and especially to oh, Montgomery Designs. Um, we thought this was going to take a year, and Jack Vreeland and Nancy Montgomery dove into this with a contagious passion, that there were many goosebump moments. There were moments when uh, Pat Weigel and Karen Hackle and I and our, our staff person, Jessica Shiraco, went over and sat before their computer and looked at all the data that they had been collecting, and I was like, is this just the FOEP computer laptop just for us because the files were endless? And they've sifted that down. Um, you'll hear a little bit more. There's a lot more, but you'll hear a little bit more about some of the work that they did and the number of people that helped review this information for accuracy and make sure that what we're here and looking at today is accurate and will live on 
at least well, after I'm gone, um, for generations and for legacies to enjoy. And I also say with quite a bit of confidence that I believe Olmstead, Baxter, Goodwin are looking down on us and very proud of what's before us. It's my pleasure at this time to welcome Nancy Montgomery and Jack Freeland, the graphic artists who put the work together. Thank you. There aren't many people who are so wonderful to work for in organizations, I have to say. But in Maine, we're lucky. We've got quite a few of them. Um, in 2013, Friends of the Eastern Prom first contacted Jack Vreeland and I about uh, developing an interpretive plan here at Fort Allen Park. And that plan was used to get city support and solicit funding. Um, when Norway Savings signed on, we began a long process of discovery and collaboration with experts, um, mostly local, some national. We certainly didn't do this alone. Uh, these wayside exhibits or educational signs are the result of these collaborations. After we give a look behind the scenes about how this came together, I'll take a minute if you can stand the cold and list some of the people we'd like to thank. So putting the plan together, I had been up here hundreds of times and, you know, attracted by the view, but I didn't really understand what some of the artifacts were doing here. You know, what was this World War II ship tower and, and these old cannons and then this kind of more modern cannon and what was I looking at? Um, so we came to believe in doing the plan that some interpretive signage would help the memorials because this is really kind of a collection of memorials hang together and make the visiting the park a richer and more valuable experience for residents and visitors from the way. So what do we mean by interpretive signage? Um, what makes a good one? Interpretive signs are all about very specific sense of place. They really caption the landscape. You want people to stand in front of them and kind of look up and go, oh, that's what you mean. Um, you want them to have aha moments. Um, there's a rule that the National Park Service has helped establish and who, whose best professional practices we embrace. It's called the 333 rule. And what that means is that when a person walks up to a sign, you've either got three seconds, 30 seconds, maybe three minutes if you're really lucky to get something across. So these signs need to work in three seconds, you need for at every level of visitor to give enough information or to give brief enough. So signs have to be short form, the stories need, to, we, you know, we try to get 75 words or so, and you hope that people will just learn one simple thing. So we're going to look a little bit behind the scenes, Jack is going to help explain the process. When we come to each job, we come in as outsiders and I've, though I've been in Maine since 70, Portland since 76, um, there's so much I don't know. And I think in a way that kind of helps you ask more questions because you don't assume anything. Um, but everything, if we're lucky, we get to work with experts and so many researchers and archivists and authors and get to collaborate and it just makes it all better. So, over to Jack. Thank you. Um, so, I'm just going to go behind the scenes just a little bit here. So, kind of obviously the first thing we do is we're looking for, for images and then we're going to combine that with text. And the graphics in a project like this, it is so amazing because there is so much out there. I don't know if you've had a chance to walk around and look at the panels yet, but we tapped into the National Archives and the Library of Congress, and then locally you got the Main Memory Network, and you know we're in the shadow of Osher. It's like there's such a volume of stuff. So sometimes it's really hard, but a project like this, we have so many resources right at our fingertips, and it's really amazing. So we're able to take that, and then mountains of research uh, from both local experts and from books and everything we get our hands on, and then our process really is we got to really narrow this thing down. So our job 
to a large extent is editing is you know how do we get this thing down to a story that somebody can walk by and go yeah i got it because that's about how much time you got with a lot of people so i i would just like to take you kind of like behind the scenes on on this one panel here so let, let me just walk you around before i do that though so this panel is talking about fort allen this panel is sort of orientation is like what is everything that's in the park uh, moving here that's on the guns these guys uh there's one on the uh the battleship main cannon down there there's one on harbor defenses down below and there's one the, on the view shed is what am i looking at down here and then moving over here we've got two on the uss portland um and then there's the jacob cousin memorial and there's also the kiosk over there with uh maps and also about olmstead so that let me let's take you behind the scenes on this one here so the way we approach something like that is we, we try to just step back and be as naive as we can and go what what's what's fort allen i mean what does what does that mean so it's like why is there a fort uh for one and now we got to roll back to 1775 and the, the british are out here and they are uh, they're they they burn portland to the ground one of the, one of several times that portland's been burned to the ground but that was a bad one. So they nine hours they siege this town, burn it to the ground. There really wasn't a lot of defense built in here. So they the the citizens and the militia went into building, and over the next 20 years they had built five forts in in this area, and that still wasn't quite enough because the British were coming and they were starting to take over islands and all. So in 20 days they the the locals got together and they decided to build what is now called Fort Allen, and. Uh, <laughs> It was it was kind of interesting because the the local pastor wrote in this thing that they didn't have church on that Sunday because everybody was building Fort Allen. So where's Fort Allen? You know why was it here? Well, the British were coming, so we're going to build Fort Allen. This berm is Fort Allen. It's not. You know when you think about a fort, you want to see something like gorgeous. Looks like a fort. You know it's not from Game of Thrones or anything. That pile of dirt does not really what I have in my brain for a fort. So this is really a good. Ex, uh, good use for an interpretive panel is to go Fort Allen is that pile of dirt that's it so we try to do that and then the next thing we do is why was it called Allen and this is another um, really good story is William Henry Allen he was a 27 year old naval commander from Providence and the, the Navy at this point was incredibly small and they his mission was to disrupt commerce and so that meant that he went over off the shore of England with his boat, and in a matter of a month, he sank, he, well, first of all, he painted his ship in British colors, ran up a British flag, and then he went and sunk 18 of their ships in a month. Uh, so they respected him quite a bit, but the 19th one, he should have gone the other way. He took a 32-pound cannonball to the knee, and it, it killed him soon thereafter. Uh, he was buried with honors in England, um, and then two years later they named the forts several of the militia forts i look at ken over here because he knows everything thank you ken um uh they named them after uh, naval fallen naval heroes including william henry allen so that's where the that's where the name came from um so anyway that's kind of the behind the scenes on that one just uh, the details, the places that we resourced on that one. The the image of the burning of Falmouth it comes from Osher. The um, we also got images from the Library of Congress, the National History Archives. The book is called The Fatal Cruise of the Argus. If you want to read more about William William Henry Allen, um, and a special thanks again to Ken Thompson over here, who is he worked with us many, 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 many times getting the dates right on all the forts and everything. And it's just a wealth of knowledge coming from him. So anyway, that's that's kind of the behind the scenes on that panel. I could go around and do that on all of them, but it's too cold for that, so I'm not about to. But I really hope you will tour really what we have to say is kind of on the panels themselves. So there's a lot of, there's a lot I hope you will find interesting facts. Um, and just one more fact on this that I blew by was that in the Declaration of Independence, where it says he has pillaged our town and, and burnt our cities, that city was Portland. And I'm thinking that's one of those facts that I really hope people will read this and they'll go, I didn't know that. Everybody knows the Declaration of Independence, but this is the city that was burned by the British that is, is referenced in that document. 
So that's a very powerful thing, I think. So hopefully there'll be lots of moments like that as you walk around and can learn from. So again, just want to thank everybody, the friends, especially in Norway Savings. This has been a great project for, for us to be involved with, and it's, uh, it, it's very meaningful work for us. So we hope that it'll have, last a long time, and it'll give people not just a, a view of the harbor, but a view of history. Thank you. Can you spare me long enough to thank a couple of people? You can manage it. Um, obviously, Diane Davison and, and Matthew Kennedy, Friends of Eastern Prom, and, and Norway Savings Bank, who came and acted as outside um, viewers. It was, just, it was so great to get feedback um, from somebody not with a vested interest. It was very interesting. The city of Portland, um, Jeff Tarling, who has the institutional knowledge uh, about these memorials and all the parks, and who is very generous with his time. Um, Deb Andrews and the Historic Preservation Board were very um, committed and so uh, intent on making sure that everything fit together and that we didn't clutter up the landscape and that the colors matched existing lighting and, you know, of this, of the, um, posts, you know, everybody really, really pitched in. Um, artist C. Michael Lewis illustrated the prom maps. Um, Joe Sukaskas, um, for general knowledge, Maine Historical Society. Ken Thompson, who proofread at least a dozen times. Uh, Susan Cummings Lawrence helped us with the World War I memorial, which is um, uh, in process of maybe being improved. Bill Witten, um, our own Bill Witten, and Ted Waller from Texas for USS Portland information, Jamie Parker of Portland Trails, and Greater Portland Landmarks, Hillary Bassett, and their lovely collection of photographs. So thanks, everybody, who, all of you, too. Hi, I'm Belinda Ray, and I am the City Council Representative for District 1, which includes this beautiful area and all of these beautiful views. I always feel incredibly fortunate to live and in here, live in this area, and to represent this district. And uh, I am thrilled to be here today for this dedication of the panels. Is that not working? That's fine. We'll get you every word. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I run and I bike through this area all the time, so I am very excited to take a look at some of these panels. I have often wondered about many of the installations as well. I always thought Fort Allen must have been raised at some point, that it was a huge structure that was here, and it's amazing for me to learn that it is this berm, that it's still there, so I can't wait to, to uh, lay that trivia on all of my friends who won't think it's nearly as interesting as I do. But. <laughs> Um, I am also want to say a few words on behalf of the city manager today. He couldn't be here. He has allergies, and I assure you he sounds horrible. So I'm hoping that he has gone home to rest. But he just wanted to thank Friends of the Eastern Prom and Diane Davidson in particular for the incredible work that they have done to bring together so many different entities to accomplish this feat. And uh, I noticed Diane was getting a little emotional as she was speaking, but that's because this is five years. Uh, it started in 2011, the whole restoration and the panels are the final piece. And it's, um, it's like birth when you are creating these new pieces of work. So I'm sure this is a very, very emotional day for her. And I just want to thank you. And on behalf of the city manager, thank you for putting together these public-private partnerships to help preserve and improve these beautiful resources in our city. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, my name is Ethan Strimling. I'm the mayor of Portland. I want to welcome you all here today and thank you for joining us. We often Unfortunately, we have these battles sometimes in our cities between those who want to preserve history and those who believe that historic preservation somehow hinders progress. I think nothing could be further from the truth. Historic preservation is the foundation on which a city is built, but it also guides our progress. 
without our historic preservation, without recognizing our history, understanding where we came from, we're doomed to failure. And projects like this remind us of our history, where we came from, and indeed where we have to go. I hope that as we celebrate moments like this, we always remember how much we cherish our history, certainly from a knowledge perspective, but really it's so important as we recognize what Portland needs to be in our future, who it is that built our city, what kind of people we have always been, who it is that we want to remain in this city to keep us thriving. Projects like this help us understand that in ways that no other, no other project could. And for that reason, I want to thank Diane, the friends, the city's role. As Councillor Ray mentioned, these public-private partnerships are really key. We have to find ways to always work together, support each other, and make sure that we are putting the greater interest of Portland at the forefront as we become, again, one of the greatest cities on the eastern seaboard. So thank you for being here today, and thank you for all your work on this project. I have to tell you, this is the best part about being a bank president, being able to use the bank's resources to become involved in such a magnificent project like this. And I know someday when I decide uh, to end my career, as we all do, that I'll look back on this one as one of the most special that I've been involved in. I just want to start by congratulating Diane and everyone from Friends of Eastern Prom. Uh, it's a fantastic organization. The area, I think, is really, really fortunate to benefit from the great leadership that they've provided, their vision and energy. And at Norway Savings, we've been delighted and very proud uh, to have been associated with the organization. And as I've been saying today, every neighborhood in Maine should have an organization like Friends of Eastern Prom with Diane Davison at its helm. So I'm going to be brief. Uh, as some of you may know, Norway Savings Bank is celebrating our 150th anniversary this year, so it's been an exciting time. And of course, leading up to such a major milestone, we've taken a lot of time to reflect on the bank's history, uh, kind of thinking through what were the factors in the last 150 years that led to our longevity and every discussion that we have inside the bank, it always seems to come back to community. And we've tried to immerse ourselves in our community, being engaged in our communities, and really trying to be good neighbors in the 24 locations where the bank operates. And so when we were approached by Diane and the Friends of Eastern Prom to consider support uh, to beautify uh, and bring this amazing exhibit to Fort Allen Park, we were super excited to be part of something that, of course, will be benefited and loved by many generations. And it tied in perfectly to the bank's history. Our roots go back to 1866, so right after the Civil War. Uh, so we respect and have a great admiration for Maine history uh, and this kind of support fit right in. What a perfect tribute to the bank's 150th uh, anniversary. Uh, so we're thrilled to be part of it. Karen Hakala, right here, our head of marketing. Uh, the two of us, as Jack and Nancy uh, said, have had quite a few opportunities to view as they were coming together these fabulous interpretive exhibits. And uh, we are especially grateful and appreciative of the work that Jack and Nancy have done on the panels. I can attest to the countless hours that they've put in, all the authenticating of the many facts and details, countless hours. So we're really appreciative of their work. Uh, and then finally, all of us at Norway Savings Bank want to thank not only the Friends of Eastern Prom, the City of Portland, as others before me have said, I really can't imagine a more perfect public-private partnership, and we at the bank have been thrilled to be part of it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Pat. 
Mayor Strimling, Councillor Ray, everyone who spoke. Um, I want to point out as well, when I spoke about Montgomery Designs going above and beyond and how they embrace their passion for this work, um, I think it's important to note that they were so passionate about this, they also uh, provided us a generous amount of in-kind support um, with many of the features here at Fort Allen. We at times went a little over budget, but it's all worth it. Um, the works that you see, the panels that are on the USS Portland were donated by Montgomery Design so that we would have consistency in the materials and the look of these uh, panels that have been installed. They took the information from the outdated panel that was there and transformed it into something that works with the landscape now. So very worthy of noting that. Very grateful for your going above and beyond. So Fort Allen is the destination. I may be a little bit prejudiced, but I believe it's true. I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Um, now everyone that comes here will know who the park's named after. With all due respect, it, it wasn't named after Ethan Allen. Uh, it was named after William Henry. They'll know how many kamikaze attacks the USS Portland fought off. And other fun facts to know and share with your friends. Um, some of the teasers, if you want to have fun with your friends, are on our website. Uh, feel free to check that out at easternpromenade.org. And um, keep coming back. In fact, come back next Friday and Saturday for the Atlantic Cup races. Um, this is the destination. You know, that the people that were putting that on came here, saw the work, as if Casco Bay is not beautiful enough on its own, to have it restored to this period of significance that the research identified as between 1890 and 1930 is profound. So it's a destination for weddings. We have the Atlantic Cup uh, races taking place here next weekend. We have the Hidden Garden Tour of Munjoy Hill. It will be headquarters here to get your tickets, et cetera, and check out the gardens. That's on July 10th. And of course, our summer concert series, which happens every Thursday night in July and August, uh, 6.30 to 7.30, food trucks, hula hoops, kids dancing, having a good time. Um, from the bottom of my heart, Thank you to everyone who's here and everyone who helped us make this happen. I'm grateful, and I know I speak for our board. It does take a village, and Munjoy Hill and the Eastern Prom is an amazing village community. Thank you.